Hi boyos and girlios, welcome back to the Steam free to play review. Today we have Synthetic Arena. So this game is pretty cool because it has multiplayer, best online multiplayer for the Wii probably, and four different classes you can choose from. I choose the uh, Raider class because I can't aim, but there's four distinctive classes that are all pretty different, so it should keep you pretty entertained with that aspect. There's a lot of different, the play styles are like vastly different for what the class is, so you won't get too bored, just you can try out all the classes and figure out which one suits you more. For me it was the Raider. This is the core defense mode where you basically have to defend your core from invaders and you always get this little intro at the start trying to tell you where all the shops are and how you figure out the game. So, so when you're ready you jump on this uh, teleporter and then waves after waves of enemies will spawn. Um, it starts out pretty easily, it's just a bunch of like scrub lords that you pretty much kill in like one or two shots to kind of get you a feel for aiming and whatnot. It's kind of hard to do because the camera is pretty jittery because it tries to follow your guy and he it's, so your movement's done at WASD which is kind of weird for a top down you usually click around to move but it's you get used to it at first it was like really distracting and annoying but as you play it gets you get more to more used to it What's, the game gets really hard though when everybody's like trying to suicide bomb you and suicide bomb your base and if you shoot at the base the base takes damage and they don't really care about you, so they're just going to run past you, which is why this game mode, I think you need to... It'd be a lot easier if you had multiplayer, because you could cover all the routes, instead of, like, trying to, like, catch them when they're already suicide bombing your core, which makes the game really hard. So my aim is garbage, that's why I chose this class. Uh, the other classes, like, they're sniper if you're good at aiming and stuff like that, and it really... The harder classes can be really beneficial if you're actually good at them. But I feel like this is a noob friendly class if you're trying to start out and you're not used to aiming. There's ammo boxes too which are really nice. So you don't have to worry about just picking it up off of enemy and getting lucky drops. And you can My fight once you clear money! like all the waves, like the boss wave and everything. You can actually get a time to like stop. And um, grab ammo and like it doesn't rush you to go to the next wave. This is the difficulty setting and it adds more reward if you can do it. I had to turn it all off because I'm terrible and I don't have any like buddies helping me with that. I think it would be a lot easier if you had friends. But I'm just trying to play casual and figure it out. And here I screw up so bad because I'm trying to go to the shop and I accidentally step on the teleporter because I'm a freaking dingus. But the weapons and the reload in this game is actually really interesting and like pretty innovative. Because they actually spend some time on like making you learn the reload times to like actually be good at it. It's kind of like a Gears of War kind of thing. Even some perks like increase your shooting power. And I just get team killed by the freaking turret here. Like, it's, oh my god. The turrets are good at everything, but they will murder you if you stand in the way of their enemy. They do not care about your feelings at all. They are merciless. But this is how you level up your guys. Like, these little loot boxes will drop random upgrades. It could either be like a new item, a weapon upgrade, or an android upgrade. And, um... So I got two weapon upgrades on my uh, bar right now with the three key down in the bottom left. So you can use that to like add perks to your weapons and you can do the same thing to your guy. They only stay during the stage, but it's still pretty helpful to try to get through all the waves. So the ammo box has a cooldown, but it's still a pretty good thing. Like honestly though, if you go in guns blazing like I do with this laser gun, you will run out of ammo regardless. I try to use all my upgrades on the laser thing because it's pretty cool. And all the weapons have different upgrades. Most of the classes have different um, weapons that you can choose from. Some of them are the same, but the, like usually the last one will be different and the third to last. So you can explore and figure out what you like the most and see what kind of weapons there are. There's a lot of exploring you can do in the game to just, like figure out all the things that the game actually offers you. And this gun is awesome, as you can tell. I'm like murdering people and it's ricocheting. And it's like ping, 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 ping. But uh. I ran out of ammo here, and they killed the core because they just suicided it. So that's the end of the core defense stage. So this is the end stage screen, and it basically tells you what you did, how well you did, what weapons you used, um, it tells you how much data you got, which you can use later, and I'll kind of explain that later in the video. And after that, I go to the headhunting stage, where you have to kill like targets of interest that are trying to escape and you whenever they spawn you have a counter in the top right of how many you killed you're trying to kill 40 as fast as you can 
but there's arrows to tell you where they spawn out, which is really nice. So you're not just looking around killing random things. Because until they spawn, I think you have to kill so many random things before they spawn. So it's good that it tells you how to find them, and this would be awful. And this is the max weapon for the raider. It's a storm worker, whatever it is. I don't know how to say it. But <laughs> it is pretty awesome. It's like the first fully automatic weapon I've used in the game. And it just literally just demolishes. That's a person of interest right there, that purple guy. He was a person of interest that I needed to kill. The last one I needed to kill, to be specific. So this is the third stage, the soul charger stage. And basically there are three charger devices, like the game says, and things spawn around it. And you have to kill them, and then the souls will fly into it. But if you lure them back to the base, it doesn't count. So in this game mode, I found out about the best weapon. Shotgun! The shotgun is so OP, it is the best thing, and it's so great how they did the reloading and ejecting, it really makes you feel like you're kind of using a lever action shotgun, which is awesome. I go to grab ammo here, but I'm already full, I didn't know if you start out with full whenever you buy anything, but that's another perk. So, let's kick in and see what this bad boy can do. See this? This is my BOOMSTICK! The reload time on this bad boy is freaking super quick. And when bad guys think you're spawning into your game. No, it's just Chuck Testa. So this shotgun is my new waifu for waifu. It's probably not the best game gun in the game. But it feels super satisfying, blowing people's faces off and then like super quick reloading it. All I can think of is like how in the westerns they like flip the gun around and reload it and cock it and all that. That's how I feel when I'm playing with this shotgun, it is amazing. But even though this game was a lot of fun, you don't have unlimited time to do it. That's why one thing I'm looking forward to is when they actually release the survival mode. So you can actually use the data or get the DLC or do a survey to unlock um, beginning weapons, which is kind of cool. I didn't really use them because I found a new love for the shotgun, but that's pretty neat. And they seem to have different um, play styles for each one. This game mode, even though it seemed like kind of lame because you're collecting crystals and then more enemies spawn, it was insanely intense towards the end. I did not see that coming. It like got my heart racing trying to like beat the beat this uh, game mode. The crystals give you when you get three crystals, it gives you more money. And this is a power up that I picked up called Thunder or Lightning or something. It's pretty awesome and once you get enough money your main goal is to upgrade these towers because they kill the crap out of enemies like once you get one it's kind of hard to get them because like everything's trying to kill you and you have to stand right on top of it but once you get one you'll see how it just murders everyone which is really nice so once you get the tower get these guys finally off the tower so you can upgrade it and it can like start tasing the crap out of people I wish there was a way to insta do it, but I don't think it is. I think you just have to stand on top of it, which is really annoying because you're just getting lit up the whole time. But it just starts tasing them with like this chain lightning that goes through all the enemies and just starts killing them. Um, I think the towers are even more important than your upgrades because I don't think you can do as much damage to the tower. So this is the last part of the game mode, which is probably the most intense thing about the game. It's uh, you're trying to like pretty much just survive with your towers and like fend off like hordes of enemies and I thought it was pretty bad when I was starting to get like a bunch of crystals and they kept spawning but here you have to use like your shift key and dash away and like that blob is messing me up even with the thunder like power up I couldn't even clear like one whole side of the stage so the more I'm fighting them the more I realize it's kind of futile and they're they're not killing my towers because the towers are OP but the towers kind of stop killing them too at a certain point because they're so tanky and they're just like flooding in. And these little blobos are like impossible to kill. Run. So at this point I am just booking it. Like I am trying to survive. I don't want like everything I've done so far with the crystal collecting to go like for naught. So I'm just like take it off running and these things are eating me like they are just eating the booty and I'm like trying to get them, get out of dodge luckily you have pretty good shield and health regen depending on what you level up but they so the shield regen goes down when your health goes down so you have to l literally let it regen or eventually you will die even with all this running this was like the scariest thing I was like oh my god 
It's kind of like when you're playing like a hard boss in a platformer and one mistake can kill you. And these little blobos, you can't kill them, man. They are just trying to eat the crap out of your booty. But, um... Yeah, this was a surprisingly uh, fun part of the game. Honestly, I didn't think I was going to like this game mode at all because I thought it was just going to be... I know they're like, oh, I gotta do these objectives, but I'm basically just killing things. You are not killing things anymore. Things are killing you. This, <laughs> I was actually surprised I made it to the end. Because these blobos are vicious, and your sprint only has so many dashes. So that was the final game mode of Synthetic. But, um, I'm gonna show you my last score screen, because I think I did pretty high. Ultra kill, you know. No big deal. Even though I'm terrible at this game. <laughs> it was fun, though. So let's talk about the rating that I would give this game and why it got that rating. First off, I'd like to talk about how excited I am that I actually got a game that actually feels like a full game, even though there's DLC which expands upon the game. It feels like a full game as a free-to-play. So that was exciting. I'm actually glad that we got something like that. But I give this game a 7 out of 10. And the reason why is that there's nothing too special about the graphics, and the gameplay gets pretty repetitive. Also, the best game mode, I would think, hasn't actually released yet, the survival game mode. Because all the other game modes are just, it just feels like objectives to kill things outside of the one where you're trying to survive at the end. That was actually a pretty neat twist on it. But, nothing too, like, different. So you can get tired out of this game really quick. But some the good things they did was they give you a lot of things to work toward too. Your character can level up, you can get upgrades, you can um, purchase weapons. There aren't any like major weapons to purchase yet, but I'm sure they might add some in eventually. Hope, but they'll probably be DLC. I'm hoping survival's not DLC because that would really blow. But the game's a really awesome game that you can play for your friends. It's not something I don't think that you're gonna play for like years or anything like that but that's something you could play like maybe once a weekend or something like that with your buddies y'all can get together and try to clear these modes the modes do have like scores that you can beat and then after that i think that's pretty much all you can do um they don't just go on forever hopefully this five will change that when they actually implement that game mode also they do a little bit of innovative innovative gameplay that is good like the ejecting the cartridge the reloading even though it's harder and it makes you actually have to like think instead of just mindless shooting bloodshed it's pretty neat especially when you get special weapons like the crossbow or the shotgun and they have their own unique reloading style which is really cool there's tons of different weapons you can explore different skills different skills for your weapons a lot of things that you can explore in the game which is really nice that gives you stuff to look for and explore and figure out how to do it the best which is always good in a video game but there's no, obviously it's not a story game, it's, it's an arena game, and it's a pretty good one. Um, I don't like the the twitchy kind of um, camera when it's trying to follow your dude, that's really annoying, but you get used to it a little bit. The sounds are pretty good, it's nothing that's like amazing, but they, they're pretty realistic like for the gun sounds and all that, that's really cool when you're reloading. Um, and you can feel like you're a complete badass, and like, I'm sure when you can play with friends you can use your different classes and some of them will work better. And uh, just have a good amount of fun with your friends. So, yeah, this is probably the best game I've played so far. On the Steam free-to-play series, that is, anyways. But hopefully we'll find that elusive game that you can just play for, like, over and over again. Graphics are good, um, storylines there and stuff like that even though games like this where you can just mindlessly kill things are fun too but thanks for watching and bye